What's up everyone, welcome back to the channel. We're doing things a little bit different here. This is a very informal video, but what I've done basically is I've put together uh, a quick little spreadsheet with a lot of information showing how interest rates impact the real estate market and how interest rates impact real estate prices. So that's what the video is. Like I said, we're doing things very informal. I don't wanna make this video too long, but it does have a lot of information there that should be helpful for you, hopefully. Hopefully it's valuable for you. Anyways, before we get into the video, if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. That really motivates me to keep putting out content on the channel, and it really lets me know that you're liking what you're seeing, so just let me know and I'll do more kind of informal videos like this. Also, make sure you're subscribed because I always try to bring value and the more subscribers I have, the more value I can bring to more people, and that's really important to me. Anyways, we're gonna get into the video. Oh, and before I forget, I am a realtor, so if you need help with anything, buying, selling, real estate advice, um, contractors, anything like that, reach out to me, would love to help. As always, if you have any questions, would love to help. Anyways, let's get into the video. Um, let me know what you think, comment below, and yeah, hopefully this information is helpful to you. Let's see how changes in interest rates impact the real estate market. All right, so jumping into this info here, what I've done on this chart here on the left side, is I've basically mapped out the average price in the GTA as a whole since January of 2012. Okay, so every single month, month to month, I've put the average selling price in the GTA as a whole all the way up until April of 2022, okay? Then in the next column, what I've done is mapped out the Bank of Canada overnight rate for each of the months as well. And then you could see when it started to change so that's what I've mapped out there. And then with all of this data, I've put it into a nice little chart so you can see the relationship, all right? So the blue line is the average price and the green um, lines are the interest rate, the overnight interest rate. So as you can see, starting from January of 2012, uh, prices were, you know, they were doing their, their normal seasonal trend, but they were going up slowly, this was a more balanced market, the interest rate was stable at uh, 1%. Then what happened in 2015? They started to drop the interest rates. And as you could see, prices started to go up a little bit more. You could see the amplitude of this line starts getting bigger, the price jumps are bigger. You could see from 2012 to 2015, prices didn't go up too much. You know, they were on an upward trend, but they weren't going crazy. And then you could see from this period where interest rates were lower, where they dropped it to 0.5%, you could see prices jumped a lot more. Okay, you could see that amplitude of that line is much greater. Now, interesting thing, this little big increase right here was the beginning of 2017, which coincidentally is very, very like the beginning of 2022. The markets were very similar. It was crazy, multiple offers, you're getting like 10, 20, 30 offers per property. They're selling over asking. These markets were very similar. What happened was the government, the Bank of Canada decided to raise their rates. So we started hearing news that rates were rising and what happened to prices? They dropped a bunch. Basically wiping out the gains that they saw at the beginning of 2017. This drop here represents roughly a 20% drop in prices, and that basically just wiped out the gains from the beginning of the year, okay? That's what happened, what happened when they raised rates. But then you can see the market didn't crash, it didn't go all the way down, it just dropped to where it kinda should have been, and then started going back on its upward, more balanced trend, okay? And you can see that there, prices kept going up, and the rate was pretty stable at 1.75%. Then what happened over here? COVID hit. And whenever there's any sort of crisis, the Bank of Canada generally lowers their interest rate to try and protect the economy from tanking. So that is exactly what they did. They went from 1.5% to 0.25% basically overnight. It was over a couple of weeks, but basically overnight they dropped their rate to a very low level. And look at what happened to prices. We're seeing big jumps again. Obviously there's a big dip here. That's because that's when COVID started and um, 
quite frankly, no one really knew what was going to happen, if the world was going to end or anything. So we did have that lull there. But as you can see, and as we all know, prices went crazy. They went up. And even more recently, at the beginning of 2022, we have that very sharp increase, which is the exact same thing we saw in 2017. Now, what I want to mention about all of this is I made a video basically explaining that whenever something changes with the market, there's always a lull where people are unsure of what to do. Um, usually the market will drop at that moment. There'll be less activity and stuff. But once everyone gets used to the norm, prices go back to being normal or at least more balanced and they start going back on their upward trend. We could see that that's what happened here. We heard that interest rates were going up. So market dropped a little bit and then everyone is like, okay, well, these are the new interest rates and the market was going back up on its normal trend. Then the same thing happened with COVID. Uh, market dropped. They dropped interest rates. But this was like an external factor, but they kept interest rates really low. And then, you know, things are going up. I think this is where we are right now as well. They're raising rates to try and get inflation under control, which is very understandable and much needed. But of course, people reacted negatively and prices dropped. I wish I had more data for this section, but all I have is up till April. So that's what you're seeing there. The interest rate is at 1% here. Anyways, so this is what the relationship between interest rates and um, prices. Now, there are obviously much more factors other than interest rates. Specifically, supply and demand is a huge factor. And especially in this period, there was not much supply, which is why prices were going up like crazy as well. But um, either way, this is the relationship between interest rates and home prices. Now, I was debating doing like a whole from the 70s and mapping this whole thing out with the prices there. But um, that's kind of a lot of work. If you do want me to do that, I can definitely do that, though. So let me know what you think. And um, if enough people are interested, then I'll make a video showing that relationship as well. So another thing I kind of wanted to touch on was the average prices and um, where they're at right now. So we hit the peak at 1.33 in February. Now we're at about 1.25. May numbers haven't come out yet, but I guarantee you it's decently lower now. Um, but I want to show you something because this is interesting. So if we take a look at this chart here, basically what I've done is I've mapped out the prices, the average prices uh, for the year, for the last 10 years, so from 2011 to 2021. And then what I've done is figured out the difference in price uh, between each year. So how much did the price grow or decline year over year? And that's what we've done here. Now, when we average that out, we get 9% per year, for the last 10 years at least. It's very commonly said that the average price in the GTA doubles every 10 years. And on average, that is correct. If you were to look um, throughout the last 40 years and kind of take any 10 year period, you can kind of see the average price doing that with the exception of um, a certain period. But either way, for the last 10 years, this is true. It increased by 9% per year. For it to double, it would have had to increase 10% per year. So. Either way, on average, we are basically there, 9% per year. Now, the important thing about this, though, is if we were to compound that 9% per year, starting from 2011, and see where prices were supposed to be, basically, by the end of 2021, prices should have been just over a million dollars, all right? The average price actually was a million ninety-five. So, call it 90K over what we should be at, okay? That's not that big of a difference, but... Anyways, I just wanted to point that out because a lot of people are like, oh, prices are so hot. Um, they're way too high. The market's too crazy and all that stuff. But realistically, we are kind of where we're supposed to be. Yes, we're a little bit over what we should have been at. But either way, that's if you were to just give or take a few percentage points here, we would end up, you know, at that value anyways. Okay. Now, if we were to look into the future and add another 9%, the average price by the end of 2022 should be about $1.1 million, okay? That's just based on the averages, based on the historical, um, you know, the historical reference from the last 10 years, we should be at around $1.1 million by the end of 2022. Right now, prices are at $1.254. Um, 
not the best comparison because these values here and these all of these ones here are yearly averages. This is a monthly average, so it's not the best comparison, but either way, prices are going down and we're at 1.25 right now, okay? Now, hypothetically, if we were to look and see, if we were to hypothetically say that because in 2017, we had a very similar market and then the market dropped about 20% and we were to hypothetically apply that to 2022 and assume that the market's gonna drop about 20% from the peak, um, which by the way, it's already dropped about 10% from the peak. So, you know, very likely that 20% is in the realm of possibility. But hypothetically, if we were to drop 20%, that 20% of the peak number, which was 1.3, would be about 260k, uh, a drop of about 260k. Okay, if we were to do that math, we'd come out with an average price of 1 million and 67. So, what that basically is just saying that basically by the end of 2022, the average price should be roughly at around uh, 1 million and 67 if we were to follow that hypothetical drop of 20%, which honestly is pretty likely just basically just going off the numbers of a 9% increase per year, we would be at 1.1%, which is not too far from that, you know, 1,067%. They're pretty comparable. So just looking at that, like, it seems like that's roughly where the market should be just in that maybe 1,050 to 1 1.1 is where it really should be. So I think that's kind of where we're heading. But of course, I don't know for sure. Either way, I did want to make that vi this video to um, just show you the relationship between interest rates and the average selling price so you can just get an idea of how that affects the market. So hope this was helpful to you, for you. Uh, if it was, let me know. I'd love to, you know, see what you thought about it. And if it was helpful and, you know, opened your eyes to some things here. And uh, if you have any questions at all, please feel free to reach out to me. I'm always happy to help as always. Thanks for watching and have a great day. Bye.